is it better to rent or to buy a home in 2023? Hey, I'm Andy with the Mandel team at Remax. And if this is your first time to our channel, watching our videos or reading our blogs, thank you for coming. This is where we go over everything there is to know about eating, living, sleeping, doing living the South Florida lifestyle and what you need to know when you're buying or selling a house in this real estate market in South Florida. So this is a question that we get a lot from people who are on the uh, on the fence of, do I buy? Do I wait? Should I wait for prices to come down? Should I wait for interest rates to come down? I'm not going to get into you know what we think is going to happen with the market or anything. That, that's a, a whole nother conversation. But I want to make sure that you get the full comprehensive picture on what happens when you buy versus what happens when you rent. What makes more financial sense right now? So let's look at it. Uh, let's dig into the stats right here in the MLS. If you've never seen the MLS before, this is what it looks like from a realtor. We're looking at active and coming soon listings. This is for sale. Um, actually, let's look at what's closed in the last 45 days so you have a better understanding of, of if you bought last month, you know, what would it have cost you? We're gonna look at a single family home in a median price point kind of city. So let's pick Coral Springs. And we're gonna look at this and let's look at the stats. So the median priced home, and I like to use median, not average, that shows more of the middle, um, was a 4.2, is 2,300 square feet, and it sold for $690,000. So that would be what it would cost you, the purchase price, for to buy the median priced home in Coral Springs. Now let's look at what it would cost to rent an equivalent median priced home. So now we're looking at rentals, single family, again here in Coral Springs. We're gonna go to the stats and you can see it would have cost you about $4,500 a month to rent that home. And it's a slightly smaller home, 4 to 2,200 square feet, very, very similar, not noticeably different, but $4,500 would be your median rental payment, what you could expect to pay to rent the median priced home in Coral Springs. So let's go to a mortgage calculator. We're on Zillow's mortgage calculator here. Um, so purchase price, $690,000 for that median priced home. We're going to look at a down payment of just 10%. 30 year fixed, 7% interest rates, roughly what today's interest rates are. Property taxes, we're assuming 1.7% in property taxes. On any property you buy in any city in South Florida, there's gonna be very you know, slight differences. Certain cities are more expensive than others, but in Coral Springs, if you bought a house as your primary residence, the year after you purchase it, your taxes are going to get reassessed to roughly 1.7% of the purchase price. So if you're thinking about buying and you're looking at the taxes and you know, make sure you know those taxes are going to change the following year. If it's that little old lady who's owned her house for 50 years and now she's selling it because she's downsizing, those taxes are probably a lot lower. They're going to change. So just know 1.7% is what you can expect to pay. Roughly 6,500 for insurance. That might be a little high, but I'm being conservative. The insurance market's very crazy in South Florida. It's a whole other topic I won't get into. And this property has no HOA. So this is how you, know, you can see what we're putting in here for assumptions. You can see here, 5956 is what your payment would be on this median priced home. So just under $6,000 per month. Now, what does it take to qualify for this home? You, you can get up to a 45% debt to income ratio for a conventional mortgage. So 45%, the math comes out to you would have to make to qualify for this home with no debt, no car payment, no credit cards, no student loans, nothing like that you'd have to make $159,000 per year, which is a lot of money that's really gonna take two working people to, you know, to, to afford that, but it's not that crazy to think that two working people, you know, a husband and wife, a couple, whatever it is, with two good paying jobs could be making $80,000 a year each. That's not crazy. There are people who are making that. So that's what it would cost. About $159,000 is what you would need to qualify. So now let's look at the tax bracket real quick. That would put you here if you're, let's assume there it's a married couple. Um, you know, that is an assumption, but that's what we're going to go with. 22% tax bracket. So now let's look at the math. Your mortgage payment, $5,956 per month. Rental payment, $4,500 per month. So on paper, it's going to cost you $1,456 more to buy this property than to rent. Like we discussed, $159,000 is the income you would need to qualify. That puts you in the 22% tax bracket. Now, side note, I really don't recommend you borrow all the way up to the max amount that you're approved for. 
Um, to be conservative, you should be under 40%, realistically closer to 35. As far as your debt to income ratio, you just, you never want to be house poor, but let's assume everyone wants to max out and get the most you can absolutely get. So that's what it would look like. Now, if we come back to the mortgage calculator, we talked about property taxes. You can write off in this country, if you, uh, if you itemize your taxes, you can write off what you pay for property taxes and what you pay for interest on the loan. So let's go to an amortization calculator. In year one, with that 7% interest rate of, of your payment, $43,270 is going to interest with $6,308 going to the principal, paying down your loan. So you have a forced savings every year of, and the way it works on an amortization calculator, every year you start paying mostly interest and a little bit of principal. As you get farther into your loan, you're paying mostly principal, very little interest. But for the first 10 years, it's mostly interest. So we're going to assume just in year one, $43,270 in interest, $6,308 in principal. So coming back here, you can write off up to $10,000 in property taxes, and you can write off all of the interest up to a $750,000 loan. So in this instance, it all works out. So if this was you, you can now deduct from your income on your property, on, on your uh, federal taxes, you can deduct $53,270 from your income. So if you made $159,000 on paper, you're only paying taxes on $105,000. So that difference at a 22% tax bracket saves you $11,719 per year in taxes, taxes that if you were renting, you would have paid extra to the government. I don't know about you, but I want to pay as little tax to the government as possible, obviously legally within the, the law. Um, but I, if I'm going to get a tax write-off, if it's allowed, why not take it? So the government is incentivizing you to buy a house by allowing you to itemize and take off the taxes and the uh, interest that you're paying. So that breaks down to $976 per month in tax savings. Plus, because you're paying down the principal every month, you are getting a forced savings of $525 a month. That's that $6,300 per year. Um, you know, So you're getting a forced savings of $525 a month. So while the payment difference it is $1,456 cheaper to rent. Really, you're, you're, it's, you're $45 a month better off when you factor in all the forced savings and the write-offs on your taxes. You are $45 a month better off on if you bought versus renting. Now, I understand you still have to be able to afford the payment, and $6,000 a month is a huge payment. I, I completely get that. I'm not making light of that, but I want to make sure you're understanding the full picture of what, it, what what you're getting when you're renting versus you're buying. None of this factors in the appreciation of the property. So the last couple of years, prices have appreciated between 15 to you know 25% per year. Let's be conservative and say, we go back to normal times and the prices are only going to continue to appreciate 3% per year, which is a little bit lower than the historical norm, but let's just assume that's where it is. If prices appreciated just 3% per year, going forward. That's another $1,725 per month in appreciation that you're getting by owning versus renting. So that that is not even factored into this. I don't want to bank on appreciation. It's nice. And that tends to be what happens when you, when you own real estate. They say, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. This is why prices tend to appreciate as time goes on, especially with inflation. Hard assets like real estate appreciate more as inflation goes up. So um, you know, this is this forty-five dollars a month does not factor in the additional seventy one thousand seven hundred twenty-five dollars a month that you're not getting when you're renting in the equity that you're building in the property as it appreciates. So, at the end of the day, should you buy or should you rent is a really personal decision. It really depends on your cash flow and your ability to make those payments. And do you want to live in you know the median price house? Maybe you can afford to spend five thousand dollars a month, get a nicer house that you're renting. Um, versus the median price to buy, you know, that's up to you. But just understand the full picture that you know it may be more expensive to buy, but what you get on the back end is a lot better, at least in my opinion. But everyone's you know, got their own opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion. Leave a comment, shoot me a text, send me an email. Let me know what your thoughts on this are. Thanks for tuning in.